Lemon Amiga present. Upgrade Giant Video Review. Sit back and get by the show. Hi there, once again, welcome to another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. This time we'll be taking a look at the 1990 release, Supercars, developed by Magnetic Fields and published by the Sheffield-based Gremlin Graphics. The game opens with a very polished introduction sequence featuring two newscasters who will literally tell you the high scores in this game. And so if you leave the credits to roll, they will visually list the high scores as well as the fastest times on each track. If we leave the credits to roll even further, then we can see the in-game credits along with the above average titled music. By pressing fire, that introduces us to the game menu and the game opens with an entry of the user's name. Here, if we leave it on load, that will actually load in our previous save position, but we can actually change the player's name there and confirmation of that will take us on to the main screen. From here, we can click on the three cars available in the game. The highest class is the Retron Parsec Turbo there, and the medium class is this one, the Vogue Inceptor Turbo, but unfortunately we start with the slowest car in the game, the Taraco Neoroder. And this is the car that we start from, but luckily we can buy extra cars from the sales shop. And the car dealer there will give us a range of all the cars in the game in various specs and formats. By clicking on there, we can choose the car that we wish to buy. And so we start with a basic 1 litre model, which we can upgrade to 1.9 litre. And clicking on this will actually give us the amount required to buy that, 30,000. And yes, it is possible to buy that with our starting cash there. You can see in the bottom corner. And if we communicate with this guy, and hopefully if we give him the right questions and the right comments, he will lower his price, and that means the vehicle will be even more affordable. Unfortunately, if you insult this guy, well, calling him a sleazebag won't help, he'll basically kick you out of the office. So, nice ladies there typing away, so the background graphics and the feel and the presentation of this game really helps. By choosing the garage, we can actually enter another shop and we receive the worst fake smile you've ever seen from a shop assistant. But from here, we can actually buy ourselves some temporary upgrades. These will only last for one race, but we can buy ourselves high speed there and that should hopefully help us get beyond the pack. There are nine tracks in the game and we can attempt those in any order. Let's just select the first track, which should be fairly easy. By holding down the fire button, we can accelerate and moving the controller left and right will help us turn those corners. Yes, we can crash into those other opponents and we can actually bump those out of the way. You can see very little on this track. This is a figure of eight track and it won't be very long before we complete this. And you can see the laps at the bottom. We've already completed two laps and so there's three laps left to go. There are four cars in this early round and we'll be upgraded to five cars later on. But at the moment, all we have to do is to make sure we come in position one, two or three and then we can continue to the next race. If we come in last, then we will be disqualified basically for being a terrible driver. You can see as we come around to lap the field already, the graphics are in the top down view and this game was inspired by Super Sprint and Championship Sprint in the arcades. 
can see even though the 16 colour palette is rather dark, at least we can see fields there and the tops of people's heads and marshes and cafes there, which all adds to the depth of the game and certainly flash out these levels. After every race, we are given a communication screen highlighting how well we have done. We will also gain the prize money. And you can see there the prize money is 20,000. We only had 100 cash going into that round, so that gives us some more funds. But unfortunately, it's not enough to buy ourselves another vehicle. We could spend that in the shop and get another temporary one race upgrade. But for now, let's just continue with race two. The second trek is a little more of a challenge than the first one, and that includes sharp corners. If we take our finger off the fire button, that will actually help us break, and we can use the skid effect to skid around those corners. We will also find dirt on the road, and that will slow us down, and later on we will also find water, which actually slows us down, surprisingly, and we can find oil, which spins us around. So that's the second lap completed already, and let's squeeze into first position. On the lower section of the screen, you will also see indicators which will reduce over time. ENG represents our engine power, and that will be reduced as we race around the track. The body is the bodywork damage, and that will be reduced as we collide with those other vehicles. If we do not collide, then that will not be reduced. Fuel will be naturally depleted as we drive around the track and the tyres as well. For this reason, it is important to keep an eye on those readouts, and if one of those meters enters the red, it's probably a good idea to take it easy. We can repair those meters in between each level in the shop, as we shall see, and keeping an eye on those has never been more important as we go onto the third track. So, this is the final lap of the second track. And as you can see, the beginner will find this game very easy. And there are four seasons in the game. So this first season is simply a season opener to get the player used to the controls and the design. So already the game gives the player a break and introduces the novice slowly to the concept of the game. From there, we can then progress to yet another winning screen where it shows our maximum speed, our average speed, and even our fastest lap, which will be recorded, and I think on the WHD version, that will save to disc. Taking a look at those meters there, we can see we need more engine power, and we need more tires. This vehicle repair mechanic is available in the shop, simply by clicking on those will refresh those bars, and the appropriate funds will be deducted from our coffers. In this case, I am choosing to upgrade my engine and repair that to full, and also to fix myself a new set of tyres. These will not affect the car dynamics, even if our engine and our tyres are ruined. They will certainly not slow down the car and make driving any more difficult. But if any one of those readouts should take a nose dive into the dirt, then that's game over. There's nothing we can do, that's a car wrecked. So taking our time there to slowly inch around those other drivers is certainly better than crashing onto the side. And again, because that fuel level is low and our bodywork is just about surviving, I'm giving those guys a wide berth. At this early stage, the opponents will generally have the same car as us, even though we probably managed to upgrade that and the speed is slightly better on our car in general. You can see there, leader is actually a Vogue Interceptor and sometimes the leader will be the next car in line and if we can beat that car then well that gives us an idea of how well we would be if we upgraded to that model. The opponent cars and the AI will be upgraded as the levels continue and their general speed as well. But as I say on this first division this is the lowest rank and the easiest levels and you won't find many roadside obstacles to maneuver around or very difficult drivers which get in our way. So you can see there yet another lap completed. In supercars we also have a backing track and I actually like the background music in this game. It is very bassy funk rock. 
background music generally changes from level to level and gives an extra element to this game. There was no background music in Super Cars 2 and actually the background music was only an option in Lotus Esprit Turbo Challenge. So having background music in this game, even though it isn't the best quality music in the world, certainly adds to the feel. And the screeching noises as well if you screech around all those corners. I also like the fact that when we win a race we will gain a nice round of applause and a nice jump up and down effect from the crowd. So nice to have a crowd feel in this game and that was certainly lacking in the other magnetic field driving games where we didn't get to see any crowd at all. So continuing we can enter the garage again and you can see the fuel level is bottoming out so let's fix that. And at this stage I like to save my cash and upgrade to a better car later but I'm actually going to buy the high speed that guarantees us the first position and that guarantees us the prize money which is crucial. It's better to spend a few thousand on an upgrade, win the race rather than not spend that and not get the prize money. So this is the fourth level and we can see oil on the track now spinning us around in 360 degrees and sometimes those opponents stick to that racing line like glue so they don't weave and meander left and right but unfortunately they stick to the racing line and hence bumping those guys out of the way. Sometimes they could even undercut us on the corners if we find ourselves with too much understeer trying to make those corners then they will pass us and leave us for dead doesn't help because sometimes the computer opponents don't slip slide over oil and so the computer opponents are wise to these tracks as of course they would be. At the moment you can see I'm passing the leader yet again and that yet again gives us an easy ticket to the end of the race. It's interesting to note that the cars in this game were actually based on real cars the one we are driving at the moment, the Taraco Neo Roader, was actually modelled on the Alfa Romeo SZ. And the Bold Interceptor was modelled on the Honda NSX. And the fastest car in the game, the Retron Parsec Turbo, was based on the Cizita Marauder. So the great graphics have been copied from real cars and that helps the feel and the presentation. And if we take a look at the box there, we can actually see different cars on the box. A blue Ford Escort convertible there, a white Lamborghini Countach and a red Ferrari. So perhaps they designed the box before they designed the levels on the game. So unfortunately we do not get the Lambo and the Ferrari, but to be honest it's not like Gremlin graphics could afford the full price of a license and so they had to make shortcuts. And there are no shortcuts in this game, unfortunately. We can't squeeze beyond the pack and cut out sections of the level. But what we do find is a nice straight track, and it's not long before we complete it. Back we go to the communication screen where we can choose the levels and the shop. And let's see if we can enter the four courts again of the dealer and let's see if we can upgrade our vehicle. For this I'm going to try and buy the two liter Vogue Inceptor and hopefully that's 114,000 and we have 94 in the bank. So hopefully if I can talk that guy around I might be able to get that car for that price. I actually quite like the questions and the funny answers on offer and this was certainly replicated in the Supercars 2 game which we will see later on in the season. But unfortunately I've managed to give him the wrong answer and he's kicked me out. So that didn't quite work. You can see 67,000 there isn't quite enough but we do get the trading value of our present vehicle. Once again I'm going to buy the high speed there just to ensure our win and I'm also going to restore the tyres and the engine once again. You may notice we haven't really collided with many enemies and so the bodywork doesn't really need much attention. On to track 5. And it's nice to see the lights counting down and again the sound effects are just enough to flash out this game with the bumps and the crashes and the skids and I like actually the sound effects of the crowd and things like that but unfortunately you don't get any crowd chants during the game because the music and the sound effects are playing together that's as much as the media can handle. And you can 
see a number of Vogue interceptors there. They have upgraded their specs, and so you'll find difficult driving trying to overtake these guys. And it certainly helps to avoid all those sticky patches which will slow us down. But look at this, I should have bought the power steering on this track, and that would have helped. It's difficult to get the power down with all these crashes going on and the power steering. Well, sometimes you can drag the car around those corners, but yes, the power steering would have helped. So, the player gets to know this game and gets to know these tracks because they do not change from level to level and from division to division. They simply get harder opponents with more roadside traps to avoid. player gets to know these levels then they can upgrade and they can choose the best option. These upgrades will also affect the car dynamics and the feel of the controllability. At the beginning we only have enough grip to get around those corners, perhaps by taking the finger off at an appropriate moment, but later on or late we would get the power steering and that helps us with more grip and we shall also upgrade our car specs as well which will also give us a higher top speed so yes the player can feel those dynamics under their fingers and each tweak of the car really will make a difference maybe not as much of a difference as on supercars 2 but still a difference all the same so that's another level completed And look at that, only just enough fuel and only just enough body damage remaining there to help us survive. So the first thing we will do is upgrade that. Unless of course we want to buy ourselves another vehicle and then it doesn't matter. On the condition of our current vehicle, we are still heading for that 2 litre Vogue Interceptor. And with the trade-in price, it's quite expensive, but it gives us the options to try out these questions and hopefully when it comes to buying that thing for real we'll have a good idea of the questions and we won't get booted out of the office. So that's another failed attempt from me to upgrade our vehicle and so we have to repair our car, we have no other choice. So entering the shop again, let's repair our vehicle and the engine is fine and the tyre should be fine but I definitely need the fuel and I'm actually going to upgrade the tyres anyway. So what else can we have? The turbocharger I've just bought and the high speed I've just bought which will make a difference and you need some upgrades if you are still using the stock car, the stock vehicle by the time you get this far in the first season. This game was coded and designed by Sean Southern and this is his second coded game on the Amiga after Super Scramble Simulator. Anyone who's seen our Losus Turbo Challenge 2 review will know something of Sean Southern and Andrew Morris's background and the graphics in this game were created by Andrew Morris with the help of Jeremy Smith. Jeremy Smith actually later went on to help design Exile in 1991 and he also produced the Exile AGA conversion in 1995, he produced Wonder Dog in 93 and basically Audiogenic and Exile is Jeremy Smith's mark on the Amiga. He also worked on Supercars 2 with the guys in 1991. The music credited to Ben Dalgleish and he's probably most famous for his Last Ninja 1 tune on Commodore 64. On the Amiga he also made the music for Continental Circus, Pac Mania which we shall see in a few reviews, Federation of Free Traders and also Terramex on the Commodore 64 and the Amiga. It certainly has a memorable Ben Dalgleish theme. So Terramex is one of my favourite themes even though it's a very difficult game and it certainly requires a play guide and review to understand that one. Meanwhile back on the Amiga I'm just about to approach my last lap and these levels are certainly easy and unfortunately they are too easy. It would have been nice to have extra levels but the extra divisions later on in the game and so it doesn't take much to memorise these tracks. You can see elevation changes there as we dip over and under each other and it's certainly nice to see those effects as we go through tunnels but there are no jumps in this game, not like Supercars 2 and the weaponry involved which really did take Supercars 2 onto a new level is virtually missing apart from a few missiles. So hardly any weapons 
No jumps and very plain and bland levels, yet the playability still stands up. The control and the handling is great and the presentation screens with those slick cinemaware-esque animated background effects were certainly something that the magazine reviewers praised in this game but I'm still trying to upgrade my vehicle and I'm actually having no success whatsoever so unfortunately the result of this is yet more well wig wearing isn't a very nice question frog face isn't either so the sense of humour comes through and um, er, uh, ah and all the rest of it certainly helps the player's experience. In this case we have wasted our money on a small engine upgrade. So there's nothing else to do except to continue on to the next race. Here we now have five cars to battle against and as you can see even battling against position five is hard enough and so the level design has been drawn yet again with an etched sketch it's basically straight up straight down and straight back again and so there's nothing hard to memorize on these levels whatsoever there are no chevrons on the side of the road and there are no signs or anything like that so on the surface it might seem a very flimsy game but compared to championship sprints and super sprints on the commodore 64 the formula certainly has had a great upgrade graphics on the 16-bit machines and the scrolling is very very smooth and runs at 50 frames per second and the inertia there when the car bumps the vehicle certainly doesn't stop dead like it did in Lotus 1. When the action is packed sometimes your opponents will deliberately bounce you around the track and sometimes getting through a field when that is jammed with other racers isn't easy and on this level we'll find the fastest car in the game there in position one and if we overtake that driver without any aids then we'll have a hard time doing it and you can see there crashing into the side which will significantly harm our chances and so to get anywhere in this game it is best not to crash or bump into anything and then at least the player has half a chance Tactically, it helps to take these corners wide and to cut in rather than to take those very tightly and to try and cut out because the understeer in this game isn't very forgiving and so if you take those wide with full speed and full power there it can sometimes help and again you can undercut the field but again the field will undercut us on those precious corners and unfortunately we came in second because of that undercut and that's our first actual defeat and this means we drive away with 12,000 credits rather than the 20,000 we would have gained by winning the race. 12,000 isn't bad, but when I'm saving all that cash for the new car, then coming in second really isn't appreciated. You can see I'm still trying to desperately buy those upgrades there, and I'm actually choosing the next track, track 8. Probably the best measure is to have a great start and if we find ourselves being delayed by back markers in this game sometimes it's difficult enough to catch up to that first position. It's essential to memorise these water and oil patches on the way around and avoid those of the subsequent laps because the water will slow us down and make a skid and so will the oil and I'm glad that that water and oil doesn't do that in real life with a small puddle on the road otherwise there will be a lot of frustrated drivers on the surface the game although appearing very polished is actually quite basic and there isn't much apart from the tracks and the roadside obstacles and the opponents so the game design may appear pretty basic and it was certainly enhanced many fold and the Supercars 2 and we will get to see a Supercars 2 review in the near future and so in the meantime I'm hounding there at the positions again I need to make sure I'm in the top 3 there otherwise I won't qualify for the next race and in position 3 there means I'm always just making it so at this stage even very good drivers need to be on the best behaviour otherwise they might find themselves in 4th and unable to qualify 
You may also notice the tires are on their last threads and the bodywork is only just holding the car together. But if we take it easy and hopefully negotiate these things without too much of a hassle, we can get through to the end of the race. And in this case, we've only managed third, which is near catastrophe, but not a complete catastrophe. And the third place will only give us 5,000 credits rather than the 12 or the 20. So that really does make a huge difference because 5,000 credits there may only be enough to repair our vehicle without managing to upgrade it. So let's check out that garage. Let's see there, you can see the thousands really ticking off as we upgrade our vehicle. Let's get the high speed and the turbo. The retro boost speeds up our braking power, which is actually a waste of money. Um, let's also buy the power steering as well. So sometimes those things are crucial by the time we get to this last race. And let's see how hard that is. You can see there on this track, we have to face six opponents. And that's a step up from the three we had to race at the beginning. So you can see I'm struggling in position five there. And so with the same number of laps to complete, it just makes the game extra tough if you don't have the vehicle. By the time we get to these last two races, yes, it is possible to have bought the Vogue Interceptor, maybe the two litre or the three litre version, to take it on to the second season. And that is entirely possible by now. Unfortunately, I haven't turned that into reality on this playthrough. There are a number of random factors and the player certainly has to memorise the most opportune questions otherwise they won't be able to afford those cars and they'll find themselves at the back of the field. Unlike Supercars 2, we cannot just spend three grand on an engine, no, we have to upgrade the vehicle as a whole. It has to be said that upgrading our car model isn't a very good idea and it's almost crucial to upgrade to a different car with a better engine. Surprisingly, the opponent's AI will also cater for our better engines and you'll find the opponents get harder as a result. So even if we have the best car in the entire game, you won't find the opponents a pushover. Generally, the speed of our car is very good and even with these minor upgrades, you can see the speed really kicks in there around the corners. And we can pull off amazing skids and brake turns because the handling is terrific in this game. So there is a lot to like about this game. The graphics, the sound, the sound effects, the controllability and the playability and the slick smooth presentation. And so this game is certainly one of those games which I liked on the Amiga and I still like to this day even though I don't play this as much as Supercars 2. But the music is a highly encouraging factor and I do really like the music in Supercars 1. Meanwhile, back on the Amiga, I'm on the last lap and I'm just about to go under the line. Unfortunately, we did not get any higher than third once again. At least that means we can complete the season and even though we don't have much cash there because we've wasted it all on upgrades and that now basically writes off any hope that we ever had of upgrading that vehicle with five grand in the pot there and precious little on the table apart from nine brand new tracks and half of our damage wiped out already all we can do is drive around this track and you can see now that we've actually been given two extra laps so we have to drive seven laps which helps on these later levels with the stock vehicle and if you still have the stock vehicle by season two you will be struggling and there is no way around it so I think Sean Sullivan and Andrew Morris did an amazing job on this game. I can't really fault it. It has great everything except for the track layouts which are quite boring, but at least they appeal to the amateur and the novice. The designs could have been based around real tracks and they could have been much harder. And in Supercars 2 we had trains to avoid and jumps and things like that. So it certainly went on to bigger and better things game dynamics are very smooth and playable and I appreciate this game even though it is basic, it's very playable 
and it is a great feeling getting in position one there after a few years battle. Anyone who's played any of the Supercars games will know that bumping cars out of the way is the first priority, and the bumping the cars out of the way dynamic is Supercars through and through. And so, bumping cars out of the way has been used in other games, but not as much as it has done in this game, where it is not only vital, it is crucial. In fact, once the player gets to know this dynamic, they will often deliberately drive the opponent, knowing that they will bash that car out of the way. Again, on Lotus 2 and Lotus 1, that was not possible, and if you crashed into an opponent car, then the player themselves would feel the repercussions, but in this game, we can bash through the field. So, we are now up to 25,000 for a win in this second division, which puts us back up to 30,000, but it's certainly not the 60 and 70,000 like we had before. So, let's try again for that 2 litre, and let's again ask those questions. If we ask the right question, maybe we'll walk out with a car. And the parrot is dead, and it's too much money, and the upholstery is crap. So, what can you do? can simply answer those questions and see what he does and actually by saying it's too much he's reciprocated and said yes it is and so I don't like plastic is also one of those questions unfortunately yet again I'm out of the shop another great feature is the fact that our progress will be saved to disk and if we change the name to load that will load the information from the disk which may not be automatically apparent and now we can return to our game this is actually halfway through the second season of the four and we have upgraded our vehicle it certainly makes all the difference in the world unfortunately our opponents always seems to be 90 percent as good as we are even if we have the best car in the game the grip as you can see is lacking in that vehicle and the usual bumping cars out of the road technique has never been more prevalent Taking a look at the scores, Amiga User International gave this game 75%, Amiga Power Issue 4 gave it 79%, Amiga Computing gave it 8%, the current score on the LemonAmiga.com website is 81%, Amiga Format gave this 86%, Amiga Power gave the re-release 89%, in issue 39 and Zero actually gave this 89% praising the smooth glamour and the gloss of this game the cinema style in between race sequences and the colourful slick presentation they said it was still great fun even as a budget release and I couldn't agree more And so if the player simply wants a rally around the tracks and they simply want to race nine tracks and have fun, then perhaps Supercars is a game to check out. It's a very fast, and smooth and very playable game on the Amiga. So thank you once again for checking out another play guide and review. I hope this encourages you to check out this game and to progress through the seasons just like me. Unfortunately, I have just shredded my tyres, and that is certainly not the way to end the game. Let's end the review, and thank you.